Hi souls, welcome to my channel where Kabe's gonna die. So I'm going to try to do another reading vlog. This will be my second one. I'm gonna hopefully do it a little better. So I had intended just to read two books, but again, I'm having that issue where I have not finished the books from last week. That seems to be a trend for when I decide to do a reading vlog. But I am almost finished with the book from last week. And then the goosebumps from last week that I didn't start. I can do that in two hours. My arm's getting tired. I should have just brought my stand down here. Today is Sunday, so I'm going to try to finish them today. Because I really don't have anything to do today besides clean the floors. Once the floors are cleaned, then I've got plenty of time today to do that. I also have to edit the video for the week that the... What Wednesday is that? The 10th. So, the... March book reading wrap up I need to finish. I'm like halfway finished with the editing of that. So I need to do that and I need to clean the floors. But the rest of the time I can read. So the book that I'm reading from last week, I'm like 50% in, is Sleep Tight by J.H. Markert. I think is how you say his last name. It's been good. It's a thriller. It's very police procedural. There's a serial killer that they like recently executed but that didn't seem to be the end of it. There's groupies deciding to do things in his name. I do have a few kind of nitpicks. I feel like you're not learning information right along with the characters. It's like the characters already knew the information yet you didn't. When they brought up something I was just like really? Huh. Interesting. But no one else in the book thought that was interesting they were just like yeah and they like nodded along like yeah we we knew about this i think i'm probably gonna give it four stars we'll see how it ends like i said i'm already 50 percent in and i'm hoping to get that read and finished today the goosebumps that i didn't read yet from last week is werewolf of fever swamp so i want to get that one done too someone accidentally kind of spoiled it for me but that's fine i don't care if i get spoiled i'm still gonna read it because i want to experience what's happening so i'll be reading that one like i said that should only take me like a couple hours to read if that so i should be able to get that done sunday so monday i will start the books that i intended to read for this reading vlog and that is You Can't Scare Me, one of the R.L. Stein books, Goosebumps. So that is this week's Goosebumps. I'm trying to focus on a book before I start another one instead of like last reading vlog trying to read all of them at the same time. Now I'm gonna go down and eat lunch because it is noon. I woke up way too late. I normally do my whole morning routine of yoga and meditation and stuff but it's just way too late and I'm hungry so I'm just gonna go down and make lunch and just do yoga tonight. I will update you again soon. Okay another little update for Sunday. So my intended game plan earlier today was to eat lunch and then immediately clean the floors but that never happened um i i i'm having this issue i'm not diagnosed so i'm not going to try to self-diagnose me but i'm going to describe it as a symptom just so you understand but i'm having adhd paralysis where your brain is telling you to do something, yet your body won't listen. And I've been having this for the past couple of weeks. I was doing so good when I have something I need to do, I get up and do it immediately. But lately, I just, I can't seem to get my body to function. My brain is telling me something and, and screaming at me to do it. You're being lazy and, and why are you doing this? And my body just won't connect. I think I need to go get myself diagnosed. I, I swear I have ADHD or something. But um, I'm going to do it now. I'm literally standing in front of maybe, there it is, if you could see it, the vacuum. I just wanted to do a little update. I mean, also my parents came to the house to talk. My brother, speaking of mental health things, my brother is dealing with mental health things himself. I don't mind pushing away cleaning just to chat with my parents and hopefully get them to understand 
what's going on. So I did read 10 more percent of Sleep Tight. So at least I did that. I'm getting there with the book. But yeah, I'm going to put this phone down and vacuum, finally. Vacuum and mop. So, be back later. Okay, so does anyone have a cat that just sits there and just scoops water out of... I just splashed myself. Scoops water out of their water dish, like, significantly? She's been known to do it, but she's doing it a lot more lately, and I can't figure out why. I keep her water dish clean. I just cannot figure out why she's just scooping water out and actually saturating the floor. I put a towel down, but the towel is also saturated, so I'm still having to wipe down the floors even with the towel underneath her water dish because she's just splashing so much water out, and I don't understand why. Do you have a cat like that? Let me know. Okay, I'm done vacuuming, so I'm gonna go down and get my mop, which is just a Swiffer widget. By the way, if anyone is interested in the vacuum that I have, it's a Shark Lift Away, which, sorry, the canister is dirty, I'll have to clean it. But it's pretty lightweight, and you have the function of it being just a stand-up vacuum. And of course, it has this attachment, which comes with two attachments. By the way, I'm not sponsored by Shark. It's just the vacuums that I often get. And then this part, this part lifts away by itself. So you have this you can carry around for detailing and the stairs. I lift it up to do my stairs and stuff. So I like it, it's pretty good. My own complaint with it is it has the roller on the bottom. My old Shark Vacuum, there was an easy release where you can get to the roller in order to clean it. I've looked it up to see if I may be missing it and apparently this model doesn't have that as an option. This is an older Lift Away model, so hopefully they have fixed that in the newer models. I mean, besides that, it's a pretty good vacuum. It does everything. I have uh, linoleum or vinyl. I think it's vinyl. I have vinyl floors. It's good for that. It's good for carpet. My stairs are carpeted. This house gets so dirty. I do this once a week and it's always so dirty. That canister was literally filled from vacuuming the bottom and the top floors after a week. That's crazy. I'm, I'm coming to you with all this information to show you, you know, how I actually live instead of aesthetic and pretty. I am not an aesthetic person. I find aesthetic things awesome, but not everyone has time for that. So I'm just showing you the reality of my life. So I'm gonna go clean out this canister and get the mop and mop, and then I'll be done. Okay, I'm gonna mop. Speaking of equipment that I use for cleaning, I wouldn't recommend a Swiffer widget. <laughs> it is good for convenience and probably much better for just like spot cleaning, but as for cleaning the entire house, it's not. It's very janky. It's just a cheap piece of equipment, but I just, I don't have deep enough sinks and everything else to fill up a bucket for mops. Does anyone else have any other options for mopping? Cause I mean, I'm all ears. I'm learning as I go for cleaning. I was one of those teens who uh, didn't really pay attention to how to clean the house with my mom. So I'm learning now because I'm now in charge of a house that I need to clean. So. If anyone has any tips on what I can do besides using the Swiffer, that would be pretty convenient for me to do. I'm I'm all ears, but I'm gonna have to use this, so I'm gonna go on and do that. Okay, I am done, and my back is hurting me, so I'm back in my chair. That is the only time I seem to get it to stop hurting, and that's the reason why I split up what parts of the house I clean. It means that I spend the entire week cleaning the house instead of a day or two, but it's all I can really do because my back hurts after. Um, I do gotta clean the bathrooms. I know you're supposed to clean top to bottom, the floors being the last thing, 
I've read that before. But the upper floors were driving me nuts. Our older cat is a long-haired cat and she is in the shedding season where she sheds a lot. Unfortunately, she won't let me brush her because she's also feral. So I can't help her with the shedding process. I wished I could because she does get some mats that I keep an eye on and make sure that they don't hurt her too much because I know it can irritate the skin and stuff, but she won't let me clip the mats. She won't let me brush her. She won't let me do anything. And it's also a pain to even get her in a kennel to take her to a vet to help with that. And since she's so old, I don't want to stress her out more than she already is. So I just keep an eye on her see if I can coax her to let me brush her a little bit. It's a crazy process and she's already got clumps of fur on, on the ground after I just finished vacuuming. So it's an ongoing battle. So I'm always attacking the floors. The bathrooms aren't too dirty and we have family coming over Friday. So I figured I can push it until later on the week and clean the bathrooms right before they come. But yeah, I'm going to read Probably go down and sit in my armchair to read because that's more comfortable than this. This is a very old office chair, so it doesn't have much padding. Time to read. Okay, so this is going to be my last update for Sunday. It's late and we just finished eating dinner, so I'm gonna wind down for the night. But I finished 80% of Sleep Tight. And I feel like I'm going to probably be reading more of it later on tonight before bed. We'll see. Because I'd also like to focus on editing the video because I've not finished editing the video for the March book wrap up. I was hoping to finish this tonight, but things happen. Um, so I went back to look at the synopsis of Sleep Tight. I have this issue where I might read the synopsis of a book when I first pick it up or for like with this one I signed up as an ARC for NetGalley so obviously I would read the synopsis to see if it would be something I'd be interested in signing up for and then when I got accepted for it which is a while later I never reread the synopsis to see what I was reading I just dove in so in my head I thought there was like a paranormal element to this I'm 80% in there is some weirdness going on but I think it's just weirdness and not necessarily too paranormal focused. I'm pretty interested in it still, but I have noticed that a lot more misspelling of words, misuse of words, a lot of that is happening towards the end of the book, but since this is an arc I'm sure that will get polished up before it gets published. I don't remember when this gets published. I think in September it gets published. I can't remember. But like I said, I'm 80% in this and I just finished a chapter that had a oh shit moment. So it's definitely captured my interest. I really want to pick the book back up to see what happens next. It's definitely hitting that crescendo of what's going on, obviously, because we're 80% in. Surely things are going to be unlocking, unraveling. Um, I've guessed a few bits of the mystery and then other things I'm kind of still confused on I can't really guess I am going to say that I do not like the main characters and the main reason why is a trigger of mine I'm gonna go ahead and say it. it's gonna be a spoiler mildly a spoiler it's more like a trigger warning type of thing I don't know if you don't feel like you want to listen to it then skip ahead the husband cheated on her instead of communicating and talking with his wife about, you know, she's married to her work, she's a detective, she's more focused on the job and digging into things and everything else and just slowly started to pull away from him. She has her own issues and stuff. Um, instead of clearly communicating and being a healthy relationship, he instead allows this to pull away and then one drunken night has an affair. I'm I'm very 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 against affairs and cheating because that can very easily not happen if you actually communicate with your partner and 
it's just a major trigger of mine and I, I'm not one of those people that are hoping for a happy ending for for these two. Happy ending where they, yes, they get their daughter back, but after that they need to go their separate ways. That may be a little harsh of me, but I don't, I don't agree with that. That's the reason why when it comes to romance books, I don't like love triangles because that is also something you can very easily stay away from by communicating your feelings. But overall, I still think I'm going to give it four stars. It hasn't dropped from the four star mark. I like to rate my books as I'm reading them. So it starts as a five star and then slowly starts dropping from that if I start finding points of the book that I'm just not meshing with. Okay, I'm going to go unwind for bed. See you Monday. So it is Monday, probably like 11... 30 or whatever. I keep waking up way too late, but that's fine. I'll, I'll fix my schedule at some point. So laundry day, so I'll be doing laundry today, but the rest of the day, I really don't have much I need to do. So I'm going to focus on reading. And I also want to catch up on YouTube. There's a lot of people I follow that I would very much like to support by watching their videos and stuff. I think I'm going to like read for a bit and then watch a couple YouTube videos or do something else and then read for a bit and rinse and repeat. I also want to start getting up and walking more. I'm sitting way too much. Um, when I first started to lose weight, I was really adamant about getting up and walking around the house for like 10 minutes every 30 minutes or every hour. So I'm going to try to time myself and actually create a timer and get up and walk. Anyways, I'm changing what I'm going to be reading after I finish the book that I'm on. I'm going to pick up Night of the Witch by Sarah Rash and Beth Rebus, I do believe. I, I'll grab the book when I'm downstairs. It's downstairs. But that's what I'm going to be reading next after I finish Sleep Tight and Werewolf of fever swamp. I'm gonna do my yoga and my meditation and start laundry and then probably sit and read. Actually no it's probably gonna be noon time so I'll probably start lunch before I sit and read but I will update you later. I did my yoga and meditation, so I'm going to go down and make lunch. I'm sure you probably saw GT, my senior cat, with me. She does this every single time. As soon as she hears me ask the computer to turn on the TV for that, or hears my yoga mat hit the ground, she's in here and jumps on the bed and joins me. It's her meditation kitty yoga time. She's 23, around there, so... She's an old kitty, but she's also a tuxedo cat, and the record for oldest cat has been a tuxedo cat for a while. So, tuxedo cats live for a while, but she's she's getting rough. She's getting up there. But I'm going to go ahead and get downstairs, and you can see her ear. Get downstairs and um, start lunch, because I'm hungry. Okay, so I finish eating lunch and hung out for a little bit with my husband and his brother. They both got home early from work today. So they're back home enjoying the storms. The eclipse already happened so now it's just storming. Um, I'm gonna get started on reading. I'm continuing with my laundry. Not much else I'm going to be doing today so I probably won't be updating again until I have something to update on. Okay, I did it. I finished Sleep Tight. With that ending, I think I am going to put it at a 4.5 because that ending wrapped up everything rather nicely. The reason why I'm going to give it 4.5 stars instead of 5 stars is because it does get confusing sometimes. There is a lot of information, a lot of puzzle pieces to this mystery going on. A lot of jumping back and forth from the past and the present. Just a lot of information is being fed to you. And it's fed to you in a very awkward way to me. Like I've mentioned before, there are points where information is said that 
feels like it's new information, yet no one reacted to it like it was new information. But there is no other parts in the story where that information has been brought up. There towards the end, the detective started to put pieces together that she really shouldn't be able to put pieces together because she didn't have the whole story yet. So there are, there are moments like that, but beyond all that, I do like the story. I would consider this kind of like a horror thriller because there are some elements in this that was really creepy and like a horror side of things. I know thrillers can be creepy too, but there was like a horror element to it. I might pick up some of his other books because I'm really interested. <coughs> yes, baby. <coughs> I got distracted by Ripley. I will say there are trigger warnings, there are substance abuse, obviously there are serial killers, so that SA, child abuse, and all that. Children are definitely used a lot in, in the story, so there's a lot of traumatizing of children, uh, past trauma. There's a lot that you would get from this, from triggers, so definitely look up a better list of trigger warnings than I can give you. But um, yeah, I would honestly recommend Sleep Tight by J.H. Markert. It is five o'clock, so I need to, um, I need to start working on editing the video, so I might focus on that to kind of veg out from, from that story, because it was pretty intense, especially towards the end. And also I'm going to do my Pilates, because I do Pilates Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and I do weightlifting just focusing on my arms, my arms and shoulders, because they're like the weakest point of me. And I do weights Tuesdays and Thursdays. Maybe later on tonight start on the Goosebumps, because that's going to be a lighter book in between this and Night of the Witch. So we'll see if I read any of that tonight. I will probably be back for another update later on tonight to kind of wrap up Monday. So until then. Okay, before I go into a time lapse of me working on this for a little bit, I want to update you again because I completely forgot to say something last update. I did my Pilates, so I'm sitting here with my abs hurting. <laughs> At least it's working, right? That, that usually means that it's working. But uh, I want to also say that I did get up and walk 10 minutes after an hour. Um, that's the only time I got up to walk because I've been running around all day today. I haven't really been sitting. I sat down for an hour to read and then I got up to walk and then sat down for an hour to read again and then got up here to do Pilates. So I count that as my quote unquote walking because I was working out after sitting for an hour. Um, I'm going to continue to do that, work on this for an hour, then get up to walk around. Um, dinner should be soon. It's six o'clock right now. I'll do an update after this later. Okay, so I didn't really do much more besides eat dinner before this update, but I figured I'd just go ahead and wrap up for Monday before I move on to Tuesday. I'm gonna do tonight's yoga. I do yoga mornings and nights, and after that just unwind, take a shower, and finally wash my hair because it needs it. Maybe I'll start the goosebumps tonight or maybe I'll just continue to edit the video. I will decide later. It's getting pretty late but I also need to wait for my hair to air dry after I wash it so I know I've got a few hours. I really got to finish this video before the end of Tuesday and I'm going to be going on a date with my husband Tuesday night, so I don't really have a whole lot of time Tuesday. I'm deciding right now that's what I'll do, is finish editing the video tonight after unwinding, taking a shower, all that. I will see you Tuesday. Okay, so it is Tuesday, and it is one in the afternoon. I'm having one of those zone out moments again and I think it's because I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. I don't have my stand up here too. I'm, I'm not prepared at all. So um, I have a lot of things to do today and I'm literally just sitting here zoning out. I need to get up off my ass and do things. Sorry I keep cursing. I'm just, I'm, I'm 
I'm done with myself. I'm frustrated that I keep having this paralysis issue. I feel like me vlogging about it is actually helpful because I'm on screen saying these issues and I immediately get up and start doing things, obviously, because I need to update you again later to say I've done these things. Um, I gotta refresh my curls because I washed my hair last night and put it up in a bun for sleep. But after that, I need to get dressed because I have two reels to do for TikTok and I have two photos to do. I batch photo like in small batches. So this is for Wednesday and Thursday. And then I do a what's on my shelf for Instagram and TikTok. And what it is, is I take a book off my shelf and talk about it because I have a ton of books. And this is both to educate myself to see what it is that I have because all of the books are mine my husband's and his brother all come together so I don't know what all is on my shelf so this is a way to both educate myself but also to show people because there are a lot of older stuff that people might not know about so I do that every Wednesday what's on my shelf Wednesday and then I also post a YouTube video speaking of YouTube video I need to finish that I've already finished I just got to do some fine details today and then get it scheduled for tomorrow to post on YouTube um I'm washing my sheets. Today is sheet washing day or cover washing day. I did not get to folding the laundry from yesterday, so I need to do that. I need to eat lunch because it's one o'clock. And I also, I'm going to go on a date with my husband. So I want to do some research to see what is new out there instead of a tried and true restaurant that we go to just for an adventure, just a little adventurous thing. Maybe I'll show you what my date outfit is before the date and maybe show you what the food is but I don't want to focus on my phone during date night obviously that defeats the purpose of going on a date am I going to read today I don't know I'm gonna to try to read today I know this is supposed to be a reading vlog I'm working on the, the goosebumps since I finished sleep tight um so we'll see we'll see if I have time to sleep today or I hope I have time to sleep today we'll see if I have time to read today I need to slow down my energy is high slow down, but also go do things. So I'm gonna go do those things. Update you later. Hi, I'm doing a mini update because I want to. <laughs> so I'm getting my lunch done. So if anyone has an HEV, if anyone's from Texas, I think, I know it originated from Texas, but is HEV spread out from Texas yet? Anyways, they have these meal simple microwavable bowls, which is basically fresh, that it's basically leftovers, like you'll reheat, you just nuke it for like, an, what does this one say? This one says a minute and 15 seconds. I'm not a cook, I don't know how to cook, and I'm afraid to make something and make myself sick. I know the only way you can learn is by learning and doing it yourself, but I'm way too busy to learn right now, <laughs> which is kind of sad to, not learn something like cooking. It's a good skill to learn. So I get these. Um, they're a lot better than, you know, your frozen dinners and stuff. These don't last the entire week. So I do as many of these as I can and then substitute with some of the frozen stuff that I've found that's uh, okay. But you know, sodium content, this is still gonna be high in sodium. Does it say, yeah. Oh. It's a lot of sodium. It's what you're going to get with any kind of products like this that need to be preserved. It's going to be high in sodium. So it's not the best. Obviously cooking for yourself is going to be better because you can control the salt content and stuff in your food and it's going to be fresher than this. But since this is what I have as an option, it's better than a higher sodium rate frozen product. So I'm going to do this and I will update you later. Doing my reels and photos for Instagram and TikTok. I'm doing a color stack for Instagram. Orange. And hello Ripley. <laughs> hey baby. Okay, back to work. Of course I have chosen the wrong spot because I'm seeing sun rays. Or not sun rays, light rays. Can I move this? That's a little better. Okay, so 
I'm still working on reels and stuff, but I found this because I'm doing Six Sad April and Old School April. So on Instagram is the Six Sad April for Old School April for anyone who has Instagram to do prompts. And Wednesday's prompt is toys and dolls and unfortunately a lot of my old school toys and stuff have been destroyed due to a hurricane so i couldn't save anything but what i did save was this old horse guy he's he's very wilted he's gone through several restuffings i was very very sick when i was a kid they didn't know what was wrong with me they were afraid they were going to lose me but a doctor saved me after taking me to two hospitals and several doctors scratching their heads. They finally figured out what was going on and they rescued me. My cat is eating things off the floor. You have food, you know. I don't know what she keeps finding. Anyways, one of my uncles, since I was very much a horse girl back then, horse lover, you know, this isn't for you. This isn't for you. She's kind of scared of it. <laughs> she wants to look, but she's also scared. He knows that, no, Ripley. Ripley, he is not for you. He's not for you. You can smell him, but he's not for you. No. No. <laughs> so, um, my uncle knows that... No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Uh, my uncle knows that I liked horses. I still like horses. But um, he got me this as a gift while I was sick in the hospital. And no. <laughs> and I have been holding on to it since. No, ma'am. <laughs> of course, I went through a phase where I liked unicorns. So his straw hat, he had a brim. His straw hat has been cut off to try to give him a horn like he's a unicorn. And it looks like I have also cut his mane down when I was a kid. He's, he's gone through some stuff, but I have had him for a long time. I can't remember what I named him. I'm pretty sure it was Charlie. I remember he had like like felt no nose things here on his big old honker of a nose, but you can only see the glue now. But I wanted to show him off because I'm going to take a picture of him for 6 out of April and the story behind him and stuff. Okay, I'm going to go back to it now. Okay. So I've run out of time. Of course, I can just come home after date night and do the rest. But I did majority of it. I did not fold the clothes like I intended. But I will do that when I get home. And I just got to add the book covers to the YouTube video for tomorrow. So just quick hour or so of work tonight for that. But everything else I did which is good. I didn't do my workout and stuff today because I'm going on a date, so I don't want to get sweaty. I'll do some yoga tonight before bed, so at least I get something. And going out and walking around is good exercise too. But I got dressed. I'm trying to teach myself how to style myself instead of just wearing t-shirt and jeans, especially because I've lost 60 pounds. I basically went to my mom's closet and took all of her clothes that she didn't want anymore. So I'm trying to learn how to style myself with those clothes. So I'm going to step back and show you what I got going on. I need to go get the last piece that I didn't put on yet. Be right back. This shirt is extremely sheer, so I put a cami on underneath it. And it's also short sleeved, which I can't wear short sleeves because I have skin problem. But... I liked the tunic kind of style, if I can sit back far enough. It's a, it's a tunic kind of style shirt, so it's longer and flowy and stuff. So I have that, and I have this black little jacket thing over it to hide. Also, it's rainy and I'm going to get chilly, I feel like, and it adds a little bit of black to this outfit. Unless I have something black to go with it, I don't like wearing white so much and then I want to add my cinch belt and I don't know if I want to do that or if I want to go just under and let this hang I don't know I'll figure it out before 
I go. And then I have this Kill Star thing. I have this, of course, this choker. My throat likes to swell up a lot because of thyroid, so this choker is like slightly uncomfortable, so I might take that off. But I at least have this. And then I've got this Infinity bracelet and this, which I like to fidget with because if you do that, it's suddenly green. So this is really good for fidgeting. And then of course I've got my wedding ring on. I want to get more jewelry pieces so I can like accessorize a lot more. I'm not going to bring my purse. I do technically have a purse to match this, especially because I'm wearing my, hold on. I'm wearing these because I don't have a whole lot of shoes either. So these are really my only option for shoes for this. So I could get my bat backpack for this for my purse, but these pants, which I didn't show you yet, these pants have pockets. So I think all I'm going to be bringing is my phone with me because I don't really need anything else. Oh, these pants. So these are like, I wished, I wished I had a different way to show this. Um, I'm going to put you further back and hopefully you can hear my voice. I'll just raise it in editing if you can't. Still can't see me. These pants are like, um, they're elastic. How do fashion people show off their bottoms? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> so as I was showing you, the pants are like those, like the genie pants. I don't know another way to say that, but the genie pants with the like the elastic on the ankle and then the rest of it's all billowy and stuff. It's really comfortable. I was afraid that that would be, you know, kind of showing less of my body would make me look bigger, but I feel good, especially because I'm gonna have the citra belt on, everything's tighter up top so I can be billowy at bottom. And my legs are the skinniest part of me. Everyone always says, how'd you get all the skinny legs? Where'd you get that from? Because a lot of my family do not have skinny legs. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I wish the rest of me was. So, how'd I do? <laughs> Did I do okay? I, I'm, I'm trying my best with all the things that I have. I'm still not sure if I want to put this over this or under. I feel like if I put it over, of course this is tight enough it might not move, but I feel like if I put it over this might shift around and it might be difficult to so maybe I'll just put it under and let this billow out. Yeah, I think so. Hold on a second. What do you think? Was that a good choice? Or should I have put it on over the jacket? I mean, you can't really see my waist much anymore on the side. I don't know. Also, these things drive me nuts. So my arms are bigger on me, so I can't button the sleeve on this if I want to do the 3 fourth. I have to just roll it off, and it keeps, like, unraveling on me. These don't do much. So I don't know what to do about that. I can roll it down and button them, but I'm pretty sure this sleeve is too short for my arm if I did that. So I'm just going to have to deal. But what do you think? Take them ready. Bye. So it is Wednesday. I didn't close out Tuesday because I had a lot of things to do after date night. Had fun at date night. Obviously, we tried a new place. I did some quick little clips of where we were. We have like a huge lake nearby. We actually have two huge lakes nearby. Of course, one of them is a little bit further away than the one that we went to. We're not in Houston proper, but we consider like from Galveston all the way to where we live as Houston because it's basically all one huge city. So we kind of forget where some good places are because there are so many locations you can be in this area and so many good 
restaurants and things to do and everything else. It took a few hours back and forth of us talking, well, we can go here, we can go here, we can try a new place. And I found another place that was actually on the lake. And then we were both like, there's a lot of places on the lake we forget about. So we were looking at all the other restaurants on the lake and we went to this one, which was good because I haven't been on the lake in a while and water speaks to me. I like being near water. So I was like, it's time to be near water. So we went to this place and the rain held back long enough for us to be outside near the water. We were undercover too, if it did rain. There was a little boardwalk that we were able to walk up to and look at all the boats. There was a lot of boat boats out yesterday. But then after that, when we went home, um, I had to full close, like I said, I was going to do. Um, I almost put that off, but I was like, no, I can do it. So I don't end up being too wrinkly from being in the hamper for too many days. And then I finished editing the YouTube video, which has been posted already since it is almost one o'clock today. So I finished that last night and I did my yoga like I said I was going to since I skipped my workout yesterday. So I did all that and it got to be too late for me to do like a little close out. So I'm doing it now. Um, as far as reading, I did manage to read some late last night because there's some loading time for exporting your video and uploading it to YouTube. My computer sounds like a jet engine sometimes when it's trying to do some things. It's not because it's struggling, it's because it's powerful. When we bought this computer, we didn't think it was going to be so loud. You'll probably hear the computer in the background. Anyways, so I did do some reading of the Werewolf of Fever Swamp. I did 20%, which since it's a Goosebumps, that's like 25 pages or something into the book. But um, this book has been surprisingly well written compared to other Stein books. So that's exciting. And also it really picked up immediately like 10% of the book in. But I don't know if these spooky elements are just spooky because kids overactive imagination or there's actually something spooky about things that are happening. But I like the fact that it's just like there's no padding or anything else. It just jumps into it. The kids explored the swamp that was like right outside of their backyard, which is kind of stupid. I know about swamps, but uh, they're father encouraged them to do it so they went out and explored the swamps and they encountered something that scared them and they also got lost because they're kids and yeah they didn't really have any survival instincts or a means to get themselves home so they got lost but whatever scared them scared them in the right direction so they finally found their house again i won't tell you what scared them because that is a spoiler compared to this other stuff. But anyways, I think I'm just going to veg and read today. I am definitely going to start cleaning my house again <laughs> tomorrow because I have company coming over Friday and they'll be here for an entire week. So I want the house to be clean. Do you do, you do that even though I literally just like vacuumed and anything else the beginning of the week to just maintain the house? I want to now like severely deep clean all the nooks and crannies, make sure there's no dirt and anything else because I have a guest that's going to be over. Do you do that to yourself? Do you fret out over that or are you just like, my house is clean enough and leave it? Let me know. But I am going to worry about that tomorrow because I need a break. I'm running around driving myself nuts. So I'm going to catch up on reading today because I would have liked to have read yesterday, but I didn't have time. And I also need to start working on editing this reading vlog for next week because I'm already three hours into content that I need to go through and edit down because I don't want the vlog to be so massive. So I think I'm going to flip back and forth between reading for an hour, get up and walk for like 10 minutes, work on the video for an hour, get up and walk for 10 minutes. Also, since it's noon, I should probably eat lunch too. <laughs> So I'm gonna go do all that and I will update you later.
I have a reading buddy. <laughs> okay, so I have read for an hour. I am halfway in the Goosebumps book, so in another hour, if that, I will finish reading it and I'll do an update for that. I'm going to stop to do my Pilates and then I'm tired. I keep nodding off. I kept nodding off during reading. I probably would have finished more of the book if I wasn't nodding off. It also had a spider debacle along with it. I have arachnophobia, so as soon as I see a spider, I, I get frozen in place. I've stopped running out of the room at least, but as soon as I see a spider, I have to keep an eye on it the entire time. So <laughs> I also had that issue. So between nodding off and keeping an eye on the spider, I was slower in reading my book. But I'm going to do my Pilates and probably take a nap because, like I said, I was nodding off. And then after dinner, because dinner is about to be made, I'm going to work on editing this reading vlog for an hour and then go back to reading. Okay, I'm doing my 10 minute walk around the house. I'm doing an update now because I don't think I can update again tonight considering it's pretty late. So I figured I'd do like a little update now and hopefully not make you sick from me walking a little. I'm not walking as briskly as I normally do because I'm holding the phone right now. So I have not finished Goosebumps but I'm going to be finishing it tonight. My intended thing was to edit for an hour, read for an hour, edit for an hour, and then walk in between. But I got distracted editing so I edited for two hours. I didn't get up and walk and now it's pretty late so I'm doing my 10 minute walk now and then I'm gonna go up and finish reading Goosebumps and take a shower. It's hair washing day so get my hair back to being curly again and unwind for bed and then tomorrow I will talk about the Goosebumps book. So that's what I'm gonna do. I figured I'd do a little quick update here to end Wednesday and I will be back again what is next? Thursday <laughs> to continue the vlog. Okay, it is Thursday. <laughs> and I just woke up. Can you tell? Anyways, so um, I guess I didn't just wake up, but I woke up enough to not bother with my hair. So today is the start of my madhouse of cleaning before people come over tomorrow. Of course, they're coming over like at night, so I have time Friday to do a lot as well. But I'm going to start by cleaning the bathrooms. Of course, I get tired after only cleaning one because my back just starts hurting, bent over the tub and scrubbing and everything else. So I may honestly just clean one of the bathrooms today and do some last minute laundry to make sure there's clean sheets and, and everything for the guests that are coming over. And then tomorrow, do the rest of it. Clean the other bathroom. We have two bathrooms and a half bath. Not half bath. It's just like, like a powder room or whatever. I should be able to clean both of those tomorrow without any problem because like I said, it's a little powder room. So as long as I sit and give myself a break, then I can go down and do that quickly. And probably run the vacuum tomorrow too since that's when they're coming but um yeah I have that to do today and then I need to film one TikTok I think just one yeah and I think I'll only just take one picture for Instagram I batch photo Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays of the week I didn't use the orange stack that I filmed for Tuesday just to show you what I was doing for Instagram. I didn't use that so I can use that for one of the days and then my husband he cameos on my Instagram because he's a reader too so when he reads something I have him give me a review so I can post it on Instagram. So he just finished one of the books, so he's going to give me a review, so that will be another picture I take. And then my TikTok is for Werewolf of Fever Swamp, because I finished it last night, like I said I was going to. Now, I also <laughs> didn't go to bed until 4 a.m. I don't know how that happened. Besides, I mean, my hair, my hair took a while to dry. 
that was one of the issues. But the other issue is I was distracting myself with things that I didn't need to distract myself with. So again, I am awake too late, but what can you do? But let's go ahead and just talk about Werewolf of Fever Swamp. I was a little underwhelmed when I first started into it, but I was pleasantly surprised by the end of it. First of all, Arl Stein's writing in this one was much better. I mean, it was still middle grade style, easy writing, that sort of thing. It wasn't like mind-blowing, but it was definitely a lot better than the other ones that I've read before. And also, none of the kids were very annoying, which is good, because he, he just like gets stuck in those tropes of being an obnoxious kid and being bratty and always pranking people. It's just the same kind of trope for a kid that just got irritating to me. Now, there is one kid that I immediately started to dislike later on in the book, because there's a dog in this. The synopsis says things are happening in the swamp. Is there werewolves? Is there not? And the dog that the kid has found is being blamed for things that are happening around the swamp. Anyways, so the accusing started happening with the dog and the main kid's sister immediately started to be very, very nasty to this dog, calling it a monster and Blaming it for animals being left behind that are like tore apart, not eaten, but like torn apart. Now I understand with there not being any other really explanation and this dog randomly showing up and then these animal attacks started to happen. I get the only conclusion you can get is this dog who has randomly showed up is doing it. But being so nasty about it and calling it a monster and, and a killer and just being so hateful was unnecessary. So his sister I immediately started to hate after that. But beyond that, like I said, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I gave it a 4.5 star, which is the 5 star for Goosebumps, just as a reminder. Considering I was off and on reading the book and doing other things and stressing out all week, I don't know if I was like not paying attention to the context clues, but I was shocked by the unveiling at the end of this book, which I usually am not. I'm usually able to pick it up pretty quickly as to what's going on and what the twist is going to be or what the unveiling is going to be because every Goosebumps is going to be either a twist or an unveiling of some sort at the end. So I was shocked by it, which is nice to see but again I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention to the obviousness of it or not who knows but yeah I thoroughly enjoyed it recommend it for anyone who's interested in reading Goosebumps um so I am going to do my yoga and meditation and who knows considering it's I think it's still like 11 something right now it's not technically noon and since I've been eating lunch at like one or two, um, I think I may knock out cleaning the bathroom before I do lunch. It's pretty disorganized. I don't have a whole lot of space. So everything's just kind of like all over the counter and I don't know what to do to make it less cluttered. I probably will do a time lapse just so you can see the craziness of my bathroom. And maybe some people can give me some pointers as to what... I can do for organizing because it's driving me nuts. But first, yoga and meditation. Okay, I'm about to expose myself. Ready? Yeah, that's my counter space and this is what I need help with for organizing. I don't know what to do. I have cabinets down here but a lot of this stuff is things that you know we grab Often, I mean, I guess I could like put the day quill and stuff. I'm I'm not sick anymore. I don't need to put that on the counter. But most of this stuff we usually reach for. So I don't, I don't know what to do. What would you do with this kind of counter space? I don't have any other shelving or anything else. The only thing I have, which I thought was a little innovative, is I got that from. Um, Sourpuss, I think, Sourpuss Clothing. What this is is supposed to be a necklace organizer, but since I have a bunch of scrunchies, I just, I put it up here to put my scrunchies on. I thought that was a little innovative. But besides that, I don't know what to do with all of this on the counter. So someone help me, please. 
Um, but I'm going to try to organize it and clean the bathroom and I will be back with another update. My husband surprised me with this like several years ago during one of the spooky seasons. I know it's literally just a hand soap thing, but I like it. It's cute. And the fact that he gifted it to me, I've been trying to preserve it. Unfortunately, the, the top is getting a little crusty. Even with cleaning and stuff, I can't get it to be fully clean again. But I think I can find these little pump things. Pretty sure I can. So I can keep the bottle and just replace this. Please don't judge me. I have hard water stains and I cannot seem to keep them off because we have hard water here. It just happens. If anyone has a good like solution to try to keep the hard water stains off, please, please let me know. But I'm showing you, I literally have like barely any room. So I'm having to put things on the corners of the tub and that little triangle piece that they gave us. This is a rent home. So they gave us that for storage in the shower for everything. I just, I need more storage solutions for my bathroom, shower, the counter, just, I, I need some solutions. If anyone can give them to me, please. Okay, I'm gonna clean the shower now. If anyone has any acne prone skin or if you have the same skin condition I do, Hydrotinina Supertiva, I probably said that wrong, but that's essentially what it is. Panoxyl is good. Back in the day when I first got diagnosed with hydrotinitis, I was told to use Hibiclens, which is good, but this is better. I'm using the 4%, so it is a benzoyl peroxide daily control. You use this for your infected areas. Don't use this for the entire body. This can be drying. And then you can use whatever soap or body wash for the rest of your body. But this is, this is good. This has definitely helped me a lot. But it's acne cream wash. So for people who have acne prone skin, this may be good for you too. Or teenagers who have really, really bad acne. I was one of those teenagers. I wished I had this when I was a teenager. This would also be good for your back knee or whatever it is you have. Um, it says treat acne on face and body. I would probably be careful not to get this in your eyes. I'm sure there's warnings about it getting in your eyes, but supposedly it's good for your face too. I don't use it for my face. I just use it for my infected areas for hydrotinitis, but I figured I'd just show this off for anyone. My dermatologist prescribed this to me and you can just buy this at the store you don't have to have a prescription for. There is a 10% too, but she said to start with 4% just to make sure because, you know, 10% is going to be harsher. But I've kept to the 4%. I don't think I need 10%. This also comes in a bar soap, but I think it's only the 10% that comes in the bar soap. Also, as a warning, this will stain, bleach your stuff. So when you use washcloths, expect them to bleach. Also, for washing them, the peroxide is still on your washcloth, so if you wash them with other towels and stuff, those towels will also bleach in the wash. So, don't do like me, wash your washcloths that you use with this separate from the rest of your towels. Because <laughs> all my towels have bleach stains on it, I fumbled there. But yeah, I, I don't care, it's it's just towels, whatever. But if, you, if you're concerned about that, these this will bleach your things, so be careful. But it's been really good, so I'd recommend it. I use this for my face, for anyone who's curious. Cetaphil um, is also a good brand for acne prone people or people with skin problems. This is the face cleanser, cleanser, and I have a bar soap for the rest of my body that is also Cetaphil. I'm not sponsored by the way, I'm just showing you things that may be helpful for other people who have skin problems. Here's another exposing moment. Despite me cleaning my bathrooms weekly, for some reason we're getting mold in corners. I guess it just happens, I don't know. Or it's poorly ventilated in here. This is a rent house, so they like to cut corners 
can be cheap. <laughs> you have problems like this or am I not cleaning properly? What am I doing wrong? Someone tell me, please help me. Okay, back to it. Okay, it is 2.37 and I'm finally heating up lunch for myself. It shouldn't have taken me that long to clean the bathroom. I started to have a manic episode of feeling like my bathroom's not clean enough and detailing like crazy and just scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing and freaking out and texting my husband about how our cleaner isn't working very well. And then after I finally finished, I looked at my hair and I said, I'm going to do something different with my curl refresh. And I completely saturated my hair, which I mean, I do anyways. And I scrunch to get my curls to stretch out from sleeping. But then I decided to completely brush out my curls while they were saturated and add more curl cream to it to see what happens. But in my manic brushing and everything else, I caused a giant knot in my hair that I could not untangle. So I had to rip hair out of my head like I needed to do with how thin my hair is. This is just a document of how manic I get sometimes, I guess. So I guess we'll find out if that was worth pulling hair out of my head and stuff once it air dries. I think I need to invest in a diffuser. I don't at all use heat styling, but I think between having to stay up for a long time to wait for my hair to dry and wait for my hair to re-dry when I refresh before I can do any filming or photo taking or anything else for social media, I think I need to get a diffuser for those times where I need my hair dry quickly and maybe that'll benefit my hair because I know some people are like heat styling is always bad or whatever but other people are saying that if you do it occasionally and not overdo it and have heat protected and everything else it's actually good for your hair so I don't know and I'm actually curious to see what my hair looks like when I diffuse it but anyways my lunch is ready so I'm going to Go eat lunch and chill and hopefully calm down from this mania I'm having and I will update you later. It's been an hour and my hair is still kind of damp so that's again giving me a reason to try a diffuser next time. Also trying something new it gave me basically the same results as just putting water in my hair and re-scrunching my hair so was not worth the effort and pulling my hair out in the process. I think I need to get more layers in my hair. I'm trying to understand why this part of my hair won't do as much as this. And I guess I'm just going to have some stringy curls because I, I keep looking at people online and their routines and stuff and trying to teach myself how to do my hair texture. Have you ever did something that you're proud of and you keep doing it and then you all of a sudden decide that what you're doing isn't good enough and then you start trying to figure out ways to do it better? That's what I'm feeling like right now with my hair. I felt like I was doing good and I've been staring at my hair lately and just like I feel like I could do better but I don't know how to do things better because I'm doing what a lot of people tell you to do when it comes to texture and your hair and stuff. I guess I'm having that issue where I look at someone who has like really nice hair and really good volumized hair and then look, to, look at mine and it's like, why is my hair not like that? When I know logically that everyone's hair is different and just because that person has got a bunch of volume and big hair and, and everything else doesn't mean that I can do it because my hair is really thin. So I'm not going to have a whole lot of volume up top. But again, at the same time, I'm thinking maybe I can. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I should do something different. But what it is, I don't know. I think it's just one of those days. And I apologize in advance that this day is going to be so chaotic. I think it's just my mood. This is what a vlog shows you that life isn't perfect and you're going to have your ups and downs. So I'm going to keep everything in with this vlog, but I'm also having one of those moments like I'm being too chaotic and not perfect and people are going to think I'm weird online and I should probably just delete this entire vlog. I'm not going to. That's just me being silly. Anyways, I took an hour as I was 
trying to say in the beginning of this video. I took an hour to kind of relax and eat my lunch and just watch YouTube videos, try to catch up on YouTube. Um, I want to get to everyone. I want to watch everyone's videos, but I just do not have time to sit and watch videos. I watched as many as I could before I was like, okay, I need to get up and do some more things. Of course, I don't really need to get up and do more things because I was going to do the rest of what I need to do tomorrow. Since I sat for an hour, I'm going to walk for like 10 minutes and then maybe I'll just sit down and read for an hour and then probably go up and work on editing this reading vlog because I am very very behind on editing it. I'm, I'm up to like four hours of content now that I need to get to and I've only done like half of Monday at this point and it's Thursday right now. Yeah I've got to edit that severely so I think I'll focus the rest of the day on reading and editing and since I'm having one of these days these one of these manic days I need to focus on that and not worry about anything else and then tomorrow is a new day. And my husband said he'll help me with the house when he gets home tomorrow to make sure things are ready for our guest that night. So I will rel rely on him to help me finish the rest of the house. Okay, I'm going to get to reading now after I walk. I'll walk two minutes and then get to reading. It is Friday. Um, I did not update you a closing for Thursday. And you'll probably see why because I'm going to be leaving that day in despite my mental health issue. You see a little bit of it with my panicking and going through things, but I had a little bit of a panic attack. I kind of overstimulated myself and overwhelmed myself. And the rest of the day was a madhouse for me. I was on the verge of tears the entire time. I couldn't film the TikTok reel. I just could not get my brain to unscramble. It was just going 90 miles an hour. Like, I, like I've mentioned before, I ripped my hair out and my need to fix my hair and do something different and brushed it too aggressively. And I just, I, I devolved. So I didn't do much else. I did read a little bit at night before I went to bed. So there's that. And I did edit the reading vlog for a little bit last night too because I kind of chilled out enough for me to do some things before I went to bed. So there is that at least. But yeah, yesterday was was rough. So today, even though I do have some things I still need to do, I need to clean the other bathroom, the other two bathrooms and vacuum. I'm going to take my time and chill out. There's no need to rush and get, you know, myself worked up. I, I need to calm down. I think it's a combination of I feel like I need to keep the house as spotless as possible on top of the fact that we have guests that are going to be over. One of them may be over for an entire week. We're, that's still up in the air. But I don't like being out of pocket and being out of pocket for that long with a guest for that long in my house it is a little anxiety inducing on top of everything else. So I think I may have triggered myself with overstimulation and stuff. So I'm going to calm down. My husband explained to me last night, it's like, I will help you when I get home with anything else. Don't worry. Just calm down. Do what you can, but don't worry. So I'm going to try to do that and just do what I can. So I'm going to take my time. I woke up late again. Apparently my new schedule is waking up at 11 o'clock. <laughs> Because I keep staying up too late. I, I keep finding reasons to stay up later. Which, these things I can do the next day. Instead of trying to cram it in one day. But since I read a chunk of The Night Wish, I figured I'd talk about it a little bit. Right now, I'm not necessarily impressed with it. I mean, the writing's fine. There's a lot of use of German words. But no explanation as to what it means. And I don't feel like looking up the words. So there's that, which is which is fine. That's a language barrier. I don't mind. It's just a few things. I can easily look them up if I wanted to, if I wasn't so lazy. But the other thing is like the main character, I know she just turned 18, but she's naive and kind of switches back and forth between being aggressive and forward thinking and reckless and then falls back to being 
cowardly and and all that kind of stuff she like goes back and forth and i don't know they're I just not really connecting to the main character i'm not connecting to either one of them the two main characters fritzy and otto and the story is still kind of slow right now so i'm not really connecting with the story either like the beginning was horrifying but also fascinating but then we're now with fritzy who is the lone survivor of the coven attack going to try to rescue who they didn't burn they they, they were taking to the main town because they're going to do a huge burning as some sort of statement it's holding my interest enough to continue reading but at the moment it's just okay if I want to compare this to the other book that I read that was a witch and witch hunter romance, which is Serpent and Dove, I prefer it over this one so far. Right now this one's sitting on a three, but I'm only this much into the book and this is like a 400 page book. So I don't know. We'll, we'll probably continue it. If I start to lose interest still, I, I might DNF this. But we'll see. I'll, I'll keep reading it today. But first things first, I'm going to do my yoga meditation and I'm going to go down and eat lunch. I'm just going to chill and after lunch I'm going to start cleaning the bathroom. Oh, my husband shaved the side of my head. We forgot to ask my hairdresser what number she used. So we kind of guessed and we guessed wrong gave a close shave for me which I mean is fine it'll grow out its hair I'm gonna go get that started I will update you later okay I'm gonna be doing a mini update because I'm about to go in down I went down to eat lunch and watch a couple of YouTube videos which you saw a brief clip of and suddenly I got really really sick Queasy. I'm taking like an antibiotic. I don't know if the antibiotic just randomly hit me, but it, it's not been doing any of this before. But I mean, I, I know medication can just randomly do that. Or I ate too fast or something, but I'm like really queasy. So my husband came home early and he said, don't worry about cleaning, but we will do the cleaning. And love him for that. So I can chill out and I might go take a nap and hopefully that makes me feel better and then probably just veg and read until our guests get here. I'm going to try to do little clips and filming in between Friday and Saturday. Saturday will be the end of the vlog so I'll probably do a few little updates and stuff but I'm probably going to be busy visiting the family. Uh, I will be back with another update if I ever read any today. I probably will. I'll probably read some. So I'm going to go nap now. I'm in the bathroom to make this final update for Friday because the past couple of days I keep forgetting to update my vlog for a wrap up. I mean, today I had an excuse because like I mentioned before, guests have come in to visit. So I focused on visiting and everything else. So this is going to be a little quick, quick-ish wrap up because I do have things to talk about with Night of the Witch because I did read more of it. Uh, first of all, I want to show this off. My family member came and presented some gifts. I forgot one of the gifts downstairs, but I'm going to call her my grandma because it's from my husband's side of the family, but she made this for me. Cute little bracelet which I'm, I'm kind of afraid because the elastic's like slightly tight so like the wide part of my hand I'm afraid it's gonna pop but once it's on my wrist it's fine it's cute so I got that and I got a puzzle that's a 500 count puzzle it, it's like colors and it's got like a bunch of like random items that are very colorful and rainbow that should be fun to put together at some point. Maybe I'll do that as a video. I'm not much of an outdoor person. So while they were outside doing more visiting, I stayed in and I continued to edit this reading vlog. I just started Tuesday's section to edit, which I will probably continue to do tonight because I have to 
wash my hair and wait for it to blow dry. Speaking of, since I'm getting so frustrated with how long my hair air dries, I purchased a diffuser. I have a particular hair dryer, which I, I'll show you since I'm in the bathroom. So I have this. If you know about the YouTuber Graveyard Girl, she puts a collection of like hair dryers. I also have the straightener down there. She's very big into alligators and stuff. So this looks like an alligator. But as you can tell from this, it's so small and we were looking for a diffuser that hopefully fits this, but it's just way too small of a diameter to do that. So we had to purchase a new hair dryer. I guess this will just be a collector item because I don't ever use it. It just sits here, but I like it. So I don't mind the fact that it's just going to sit there and be a cool piece to look at and show off and stuff. Cause I like alligators too. I like alligator prints and, and all that, but yeah, I, I bought a Revlon. I think it's a Revlon. It's a retractable cord so I don't have to do this nonsense to it and it's got a diffuser with it so I'm going to try my hand at diffusing my hair so I'm not waiting until like 4 a.m to go to bed and hopefully then I can wake up at the right time but that's coming in tomorrow so I'll just have to air dry it again or I learned that there's a trick I can use with just the blow dryer if I like use my hands is like like a diffuser, kind of scrunch it up and like hover, blow dry and just like cut my hands with the scrunching and I think you have to do it at an angle so you're not like blowing it everywhere. I don't know, I, maybe I'll try that tonight and see what happens. But anyways, um, before I go do that, I want to talk about Night of the Witch. I read more of it. I'm at page 122. I mentioned last update that I wasn't entirely impressed with the book. I, I said that and then the next chapter I immediately started to get more invested in the story and I am invested in the story quite a bit now so I'm going to continue to read this. But I have some major nitpicks with this. So there's two point of views. You have Otto and Fritzy. I prefer Otto's section a lot more. I read Fritzy's and just like okay let's get this over with quickly so I can get to Otto because Otto is much better written and I'm wondering, I, I don't know, but I'm wondering since this is by two authors if one author wrote Fritzy and one author wrote Otto. Considering this is a young adult book, I'm assuming he's the same age as her or roundabout, but he seems more put together. He seems more planned out. I much prefer that in a character compared to someone who's flying by the edge of her seat and just wishy-washy like Fritzy is. So yeah, I, I definitely connect with Otto a lot more than Fritzy. And what's weird is, which is another reason why I think maybe the authors wrote one character and then the other and just kind of like compared notes and made sure that it made sense and was cohesive. With Otto, the way he describes Fritzy and the reactions that Fritzy has to the things that he says and does makes Fritzy seem a lot more put together than in Fritzy's point of view where she's a lot more scatterbrained. Now I understand that that could be because Otto sees the surface Fritzy and we're seeing the inner Fritzy when we read Fritzy's point of view. The same thing does kind of happen with Fritzy looking at Otto. She sees Otto as very, you know, stoic and has a certain viewpoint of Otto. So I'm, I, I think it may be what's happening is they're seeing one side of the other character and the reality is when you go to their actual point of view, you're seeing the inner part of the character. I think that's what's causing that. But it just, it's kind of jarring seeing Fritzy for who she is. And then Otto sees Fritzy in another way and vice versa. I don't know. I just, I'm not connecting with Fritzy at all. And it's... It's making this a little bit disappointing when it comes to Fritzy, but overall I'm enjoying it enough. I'm going to continue to read it because the story itself is capturing my interest. It's historical. I don't know enough about history to know if this is 
accurate or they're just taking bits and pieces of history and kind of mashing it together for this fantasy. I don't know, but it, it's fascinating enough, the politics and what's going on with the archbishop and the witch burnings and the trials. They're doing the typical, like in real life, where they started burning who they think were witches. It went from that to a craze of suddenly I don't like my wife anymore. So oh, all of a sudden she's a witch, but most of them are innocent people that they were burning and it's women mostly. There is a nod that some men also get accused as witches, but it's mostly women. Like I said before, this is a dark romancy, so it's a little rough considering all the treatment and stuff, especially towards women in this book. So a little warning there if you ever decide to read this. I mentioned also that I was comparing this to Serpent and Dove. I'm starting to pull away from that a little bit, but there are still some similarities of course, I feel like I'm going to find similarities between any witch and witch hunter book. I, it's just something that I do. I don't know if I'm going to finish this by the end of the week. Tomorrow is going to be the last of the reading vlog, but I'll continue to read this until I finish it unless I decide to DNF it. But yeah, I'm going to end it here and I will be back Saturday. All right, so it is Saturday. This is going to be the last day of the vlog. Um, I don't really have much to do today, so I'm probably going to be doing just reading and editing this reading vlog for Wednesday coming up, unless my family wants to do something today. My husband and his brother, their routine on Saturdays is usually going to their friend's cigar shop and hanging out and stuff, so I think the guests have gone with them to do that while I just chill here at the house to try to go to bed early, which I didn't. I didn't go to bed early despite trying to do this. You use your hair dryer if you don't have a diffuser and just kind of like cup your hair and do that. It didn't work. It stretched out my hair and made it frizzy and everything else. So <laughs> I'm going to try to fix it today because if we go out, I would like my hair to at least be somewhat presentable. If not, I'll just pulled up in a ponytail. Um, maybe I'll update you later. This is probably going to be a slower day for updates, but if I have anything to say, I will update later. Okay, so this is like 11, almost midnight for Saturday, and I've got a lot to update on. So, the stuff that I said this morning where I was just going to sit and read and work on the reading vlog, I kind of got distracted. I maybe read like a chapter of Night of the Witch. My husband and all of our family came over for lunch after their whole cigar thing. So we sat there and ate lunch and watched a bunch of TV and stuff and just hung out until I mentioned I kind of needed the room for taking photos because... Saturdays are my batch photo days. Like I said, I do small batch photos throughout the week. So they went to go sit outside while I worked on that. And then I completely forgot that we were going to go hang out at the local ice house while a friend of ours who is also here for my brother-in-law's birthday had a concert. So we were dropping him off to the concert I think it was Tool. I, I can't remember who was in the concert. We dropped him off and there was an ice house like right next door that we hung out at for like five hours. <laughs> so you've seen a bunch of clips before this of us hanging out at the ice house. We just sat and drank and played Uno Flip. <laughs> I have a bunch of Uno card games. We, we brought in other card games too, but Uno Flip was like the easiest thing to play because the ice house was packed. People were pre-gaming for the concert and then just people hanging out there once the concert people left to go to the concert. We found like a nice corner that wasn't too crowded, which is good because crowds kind of bother me. But that's what I've been doing. So I, I didn't get to update because of all that. Um, I did get dressed for it. So I'm going to scoop the camera down and hopefully get a good shot of what I'm wearing. 
but again I don't know how the fashion people do it I can't seem to get my full body in in the photo but let's let's try okay you can't see my whole body I don't I don't know how they do it but I have my cinch belt on again I'm in this leopard print shirt and I'm just in black leggings and my knee-high boots and then I have this short sleeve shawl on I mean these sleeves are fine but it's just just because I, I needed a little bit more security because you're gonna sit for a while and this cinch belt likes to bunch up on me so this is just for my comfort than anything that and it has pockets which I like pockets and my leggings don't have pockets so yeah and I have the same choker on and the same kill star moon ne necklace on and then I've shown this before for the reading vlog that my grandmother got me. So I did basically a black and orange number. I have the same thing on. And I have the scrunchie on just in case for my hair, which I will talk about my hair after I show all this. And then I had this bag to do the black and orange thing, which is Sam. So I had this bag to go with the whole black and orange thing. Anyways, as for my hair, <laughs> that was a whole debacle. So I've mentioned in the morning update that I attempted to dry my hair with a blow dryer without a diffuser, but it was like all frizzy and everything. And in the morning, I just didn't feel confident that me just using water and scrunching up like I normally do will save it. So I try to add more mousse and all it did was make it a crunchy mess. I used hair oil like people suggest to try to scrunch the crunch or whatever, but I can never scrunch the crunch out and I don't like the feeling of the crunchiness. So I was just getting overstimulated from the crunchy look and it just looked gross to me. So I just took a brush to it and brushed it out, which I mean made it <laughs> frizzy, but that's fine. So that's the reason why, why my hair is like this instead of its normal texture. And this is what my hair looks like when I air dry it without, you know, putting the products in and scrunching and stuff. So that's the reason why I started my journey into embracing my texture. Because I saw a picture online It's like, if your hair looks like this when you air dry, you may have texture. And turns out I do. What else do I need to update on? So like I was saying, uh, we did a bunch of Uno Flip, which that game can get frustrating. <laughs> but there is one round that we did there was four people I was playing. Um, me, my husband, brother-in-law, and his mom. I say brother-in-law, by the way, but he's not actually related to my husband. He's a, just a friend who grew up with him, so he's basically a brother. So I just call him brother-in-law instead of saying my husband's friend. It, it's just easier for me to say. They were all playing with me, and one of the rounds, all three of them announced Uno. So it came down to me, and I was like, great. <laughs> Either one of these people are going to win or I'm going to have to do something in order to force them to draw. So I had a wild card and I put it down and I chose yellow. And thankfully, I chose right. So all three of them had to draw and I became the one with Uno and I won. <laughs> Which was crazy considering all three of them were about to win. I'm, I'm proud of myself for that one. I did do some reading when they started to more focus on drinking. I don't do a whole lot of drinking myself. That and I'm on an antibiotic, so I can't really drink that much anyways. I just don't like how I feel and how I act and react to alcohol. I do have a history of alcoholism in my family, so when I feel the way that I feel, I know that I'm not good on alcohol. So I only had one, so while the rest of them were drinking, I just hung back and read. So I have an update on reading. Hold on. So I was going to go get the Night of the Witch book, but I realized that I left it downstairs and I don't feel like going downstairs just to do this update. So you know what Night of the Witch looks like. I've already showed it several times. I'm going to continue to read it because I am invested in the story enough to read it, but I have got so many nitpicks on it, but it has not dropped from the three star mark because the story itself is interesting enough to keep me invested in the story and keep me reading. But I still have a problem with Fritzy. She is still not impressing me. 
her decisions and her monologues and her thought processes and everything else frustrate me so much. So every single time it goes to a Fritzy chapter, I'm just like, okay, what is she going to do that caused me to groan and roll my eyes? I prefer Otto much better than I do Fritzy. Otto seems a lot more level-headed, more of my kind of character than Fritzy is. And also, now that the like romance part of it is slowly coming into the story, it feels forced to me. It feels like this story would have been great if they were just platonic or found family because she's lost her family, he's lost his family. A found family kind of thing would have been great too. It, it's not necessary for the story. The story is intense enough where you do not need a romance. I'm comparing it again to Serpent and Dove. Serpent and Dove, the romance, I mean, it was an arranged marriage. So, I mean, the romance kind of centered around the story. So it made more sense for it to have a romance. Whereas this one, the romance isn't necessarily centered around it, though in the synopsis it kind of hints that it is going to be. So maybe I'll change my mind once I get there, but at this point I'm just like, it's not necessary. There's no need. Um, but the story itself is what's keeping me invested, or else I would be DNFing this. I did read the back of the book, not the uh, conclusion, but the back of the book has information about the story. Because I've mentioned before, this is a historical fiction and fantasy. So the fantasy elements are there, but the rest of it is actually historical fiction, according to them. I don't know history enough to check facts, but all of their talk about Trier, 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 Trier? I, I can't say the German city, but that city is actually real. The Trier witch trials is the beginning of the witch trials that went on down to Salem witch trials. So... Apparently that's all real. I want to read more about the witch trials and stuff, so I'll be able to fact check that later. But at the moment, I don't know. So anyone who knows that can tell me down in the comments. My husband did fact check some of it because I was talking to him about it at the ice house. And he said, yeah, that's true about the Black Forest. They used the Black Forest, which Romans were avoiding the Black Forest because there was a bunch of rumors and stuff about the forest being cursed or protected by wild folk or, or witches. I can't remember what what caused the Romans to stay away from the Black Forest, but that's essentially what's happening here too. Everyone's staying away from the Black Forest in this book. There's a lot of commentary about different politics and religion, but religion mostly. So that's keeping my interest and that's what's causing me to continue to read the book is all of that. But um, I'm going to get comfortable now they're gonna go back outside and continue to drink <laughs> and i'm going to stay up here and edit my video because i am very behind on editing this video i forgot one update so i'm just going to add this somewhere but anyways i finally got a diffuser i found this on amazon it's a revlon and it's a retractable cord which is going to be so much better. I've talked about this before that we were going to get this for me because I really want to try a diffuser and I couldn't find one that works for my blow dryer. So got one and it's been delivered. So I'm excited for Monday. It's going to take learning. I've not blow dried my hair since I was a teenager. <laughs> it's been a while. So, and a diffuser I've never done. It'll be interesting. It's hot pink and black, which is cool. I'm excited. I just wanted to show this off. So I don't think I'm going to do another update considering it's already late. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you for coming along on this very, very chaotic reading <laughs> vlog. That's more like a lifestyle vlog with some reading in it. I was expecting to read more than I did. I mean, I know I finished two books, but not the books that I intended to read this week for this reading vlog, but at least I finished two books. I had my ups and downs. I'm going to leave my downs in this to show you my life and, you know, mental health. It should be out there in the open. Mental health is a thing, just like physical health, chronic illnesses, all that mental health awareness needs to be out there. I don't know what I'm going to do next after this. It might be another window shop with me because I got a few ideas for the window shop with me. Maybe it'll be that or I think I was tagged in something recently. 
So maybe it's going to be a booktube tag. One of those things I'll do for the next video. So be looking forward for that. Until next Wednesday, like, comment, subscribe. Bye, souls.